Good morning, everyone. Let's wait for another minute so everybody can join. That's and then we'll start. So hopefully all uh, have joined us. Good morning, once again. Uh, thank you for joining our webinar today. My name is Anastasia Ruja, and I will be moderating this event. Today we will talk about commercial real estate industry in the Baltics, discuss the COVID year events and the impact it has made. We will touch the topics covered in our annual report 2021 uh, that is to be launched today. At the end of the webinar, I'll tell you how you can place a request to acquire our latest analytical research. Uh, before we start, I'd like to lead you through our agenda. First of all, we'll go briefly through the main insights in commercial real estate investment, retail, office, industry, and hospitality segments. If you have any questions, you can write them in chat. We'll try to catch up with them during the webinar. If you don't have time for it, please leave your contact details or contact us directly with specific questions after the, the webinar. The presentations uh, uh, are to be followed by a panel discussion with some special guest speakers. And now I'd like to give the floor to Marius Tino to tell about the investment uh, climate in the Baltics. Please, Marius. Good morning, everyone, uh, and welcome to our uh, annual market report overview. Uh, we start with uh, investment market uh, that we consider a kind of, uh, um, let's say, uh, indicator of health of the overall market, especially in the current uh, turbulent uh, situation. It's it's pretty pretty important to see how how investors are are feeling the market. So in, in 2020, I can say that actually the year was pretty good. Uh, even I would say uh, it uh, surprised us uh, a bit uh, at the end, uh, given the kind of situation we, we, we were in, in, in 2020. In the first half of the year, we were pretty sure that uh, we will not probably reach the so to say, normal level of Baltic uh, investment volume, that is 1 billion euros. But at the end of the year, uh, it was clear that uh, we went slightly even over it. So uh, taking that number purely, we would can say that uh, it was quite, quite okay. And even I would say good year for, for uh, commercial real estate investment in, in Baltics uh, last year. Uh, what we, of course, have to take into account here is that uh, some of the deals that happened last year were actually uh, started already earlier, especially before the kind of COVID situation. So uh, we cannot be 100% sure that everything that happened last year uh, took into account 100% uh, also this COVID situation. And uh, year 2021, in that sense, will be uh, most probably a little bit uh, better uh, indicating what is the kind of real COVID uh, uh, effect uh, to investments. As you see, we have forecasted a uh, slightly lower level for 2021 compared to uh, 2020. Uh, but still, uh, I would say that we are here maybe a little bit uh, more conservative uh, and hoping that uh, actually we will reach in 2021 also at least 1 billion euros uh, in, in Baltic level. As we know that uh, there are um, some large deals uh, cooking in, in, uh, in all, uh, so to say, in all Baltic states. And, uh, and if we see that uh, compare, for example, if to even at least a little bit compare, uh, let's say the last large crisis that we have, had uh, a bit more than 10 years ago, then uh, we are in, in totally okay uh, levels in that sense. So, uh, so we were in much, much worse situation uh, than 11 years ago. But as I mentioned, the, it depends, the total volume depends a lot on uh, large scale deals. 
that that uh, are giving uh, from the total volume uh, uh, let's say starting from 10 million euros the deals are giving uh, approximately 75 percent uh, so uh, it is very dependent on that and at the moment as i mentioned we see that there are potentially deals uh, larger ones also happening in in 2021 uh, if to speak a little bit about the country specific numbers then uh, numbers were uh, okay in all countries it wasn't the situation where one country was much dominating uh, in Baltic level of course Lithuania was leading as it has done uh, uh, for uh, for quite many years now already and uh, but Latvia and Estonia were also on, on a pretty good levels uh, that we can see say that are uh, hopefully also sustainable in 2021 uh, okay let's go to the next slide uh, uh, so there is always a question uh, about uh, yields uh, when we talk about uh, real estate investments. Uh, this is this is especially interesting and and, and hot topic in in current environment, and we see quite uh, interesting movements and developments here because of the COVID situation. There has been clearly, clearly pressure uh, on uh, office and industrial yields. Uh, industrial, maybe uh, in, in general, this sector, but more, more specifically for uh, logistics. And uh, this is, of course, related to uh, distribution, uh, retail, etc., etc. Let's say logistics feels one of the most kind of safe investment uh, products uh, on the market at the moment. And regarding office, here we are talking the kind of prime core office uh, that is also something that uh, not only in Baltics, but also uh, in, in Europe, the rest of the world is one of the kind of safe heavens where, where investors would like to invest because they see that uh, centrally located good office space is probably resilient uh, to all the kind of market turbulences and, and uh, worthwhile to invest into uh, in, in the long term. Um, regarding the yield compression and the pressure on yields, uh, of course, uh, I have to mention that uh, quality is still the most important uh, aspect uh, in, in decision making. Uh, that goes also regarding the log logistics, so that in that sense, uh, not all is gold that shines so you have to have your product uh, more or less perfect in 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 all sense location wise condition wise tenant strength etc etc so all those things have to be in place to to get the kind of best possible uh, price and yield level uh, available on the market at the moment so last year uh, let's say top deals also if to mention here the three largest deals uh, were from all, all from different uh, market sectors. The largest one was from uh, residential sector, clearly uh, more and more coming to the market and more and more becoming as an alternative for investors. Uh, the second largest was uh, shopping center ret retail uh, uh, property and the third one uh, office. Uh, we don't see here logistics. Uh, probably uh, for Baltics, it's it's pretty hard to get a logistics deal in in top uh, three at least. Uh, although in top ten in uh, in Baltics we saw also logistics uh, properties, but uh, logistics property has to be pretty big to to achieve also significant volume in sense of kind of top deals in Baltics. And if to mention uh, is, uh, more um, kind of detailed uh, the importance of large deal uh, once more, then last year uh, top 10 deals in, in Baltics uh, gave 50% of the total uh, volume. So that also shows how, how significant are big deals for our, uh, our uh, region uh, in terms of uh, investment market and its functionality and, uh, and trend setting. The main investors, not that many uh, surprises here for you. Maybe the ICG is the one, the newcomer. Uh, 
the one that was behind the uh, largest uh, deal in the Baltics last year, the residential one, and the other ones are more or less uh, familiar for you. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So what is for, uh, what, what's the agenda for investors in 2021? Probably the main question is and will remain uh, where are the products? So uh, the product availability is probably the biggest question and then problem for, for investors to get uh, the, the product that has the quality and also the price in place uh, where the deal would be more and more probable. So that is the big, big uh, challenge, but I hope that uh, there will be uh, enough opportunities available to keep our uh, investment market uh, running. Of course, the COVID impact uh, is remaining here and uh, now maybe the kind of uh, view or analysis on its uh, long run uh, kind of effect will become more and more evident. The big question is, uh, are there any kind of structural changes uh, in the background, especially maybe in office and maybe in retail? So that might uh, start influencing maybe more also uh, investors' uh, decisions of making. Uh, but then we have the alternative targets, as mentioned already, residential. We have seen already in uh, now uh, this year in Riga, one large deal. Uh, senior housing is clearly coming. Uh, and also what we see that uh, so far the investors who have been concentrating more uh, in, in, in cash flow and only in, or only in cash flow are now looking more and more also development and then ready to take this development risk. Distressed opportunities, not much. Maybe this is the big question mark, and I believe that also distressed uh, as a as a term maybe has a little bit different essence as we have uh, maybe. Uh, used to take it, uh, especially if to compare to the last crisis. Bison financing is still uh, available uh, with pretty good uh, conditions. I would say uh, at the moment we can't say and see that there are any kind of real problems in that sense. And what is the good thing that uh, it's, it's, we can be pretty sure that locally accumulated capital will keep the market running. Uh, as we know that the 80, 90% of the deals by number are uh, up to 5 million uh, euros. So that will keep the kind of blood running. And we hope that the foreign capital will, will keep up the volume uh, in sense of large uh, scale deals. So if to sum up, uh, situation is complicated, but clearly not nothing uh, dramatic. And uh, we hope that uh, real estate, especially commercial real estate, will prove to be resilient also uh, in 2021 regarding the overall situation and uh, we will keep going. So that's uh, all from uh, my side regarding uh, investments and I will give now a word to my colleague Evgenia who will uh, tell you about uh, retail sector. Thank you. Hi. Dear all, uh, hello. I'm honored to speak about uh, one of the most unpredictable and, uh, and uh, interesting and most discussable segment in the real estate over last uh, year, uh, the retail. And um, we can move to another slide. So basically, uh, as time is quite limited, I will give you a short overview of uh, what has happened in the previous year. We will touch also the trends for the 2021 and we will discuss the top challenges uh, for, the, uh, for the 2021 and also for the upcoming years. Uh, in case you will have some more questions or comments, please feel free to send us email or, or just uh, send uh, us uh, your questions. Uh, but actually, if we're turning back to the 2020, it was quite, uh, it was planned that the year will be quite ambitious. We were waiting for the newcomers to the market. And basically, we were waiting for the opening of the new shopping centers. And uh, more or less, we expected that the 2020 will be everything about the balance. The market will be saturated and matured. Uh, however, in March, uh, uh, basically started the COVID and seems like COVID had another plan for 2020. 
and uh, we face uh, with a lot of challenges. And uh, I may say that 2020, starting from the March, was everything about uh, rethinking the models, trying to understand the impact on the rent rates, uh, on the market perspective, and basically what to do in the upcoming years. Uh, despite the COVID, uh, we saw that uh, basically the all uh, openings which was planned uh, opened. Uh, shopping center uh, Saga near Kia, the Oregon shopping center expanded, and also some new product like uh, outlet uh, store via Yurmala also opened. And uh, also in the same time, we also saw newcomers to the market. So we saw like uh, Burger King opening in the 2020 and also KFC and Vapiana in the beginning of the January. And uh, to, to, to what we saw basically that the COVID impact was uh, mainly uh, in the 2020 not so significant and we were just trying to understand how to deal with that and how to live with that. However, uh, we know that uh, everything what will be connected with the 2021, it will be impact of the COVID. And uh, the real picture and situation we will see only this year and the next year as well. And um, seems like uh, beginning of the 2021 was uh, trying to understand uh, uh, what will be situation in the upcoming year over, overall. Uh, but uh, if we're turning to the retail stock and the pipeline uh, to the upcoming years, we may see that uh, active period as it was uh, during past three years are finishing and we will be entering to the new circle of the retail. Uh, at the pipeline, you may see also that not so many objects are planned to be uh, opened and developed during upcoming years. Uh, the number comparing to the previous year is quite small and uh, it more uh, it more driven by the DUI segment and also some of the expansions of the current shopping centers. And uh, basically what we uh, see that uh, those uh, upcoming years will be everything about rethinking the strategy, redevelopment of the current assessment and trying to understand how to deal, uh, deal with the tenants. At the same time, uh, also, we saw that the uh, impact on the rent rate during that year will be quite uh, significant because the rent rate uh, will go down a bit. Uh, maybe a prime shopping center will still be on the same level. However, we see that the overall sentiment uh, is that the rent rates will be slightly decreased. Uh, if we're speaking about the transfer 2021, uh, what are the top highlights which we will see? in the upcoming year. So first of all, as I have mentioned, the end of active development period. And uh, it means that the shopping center, the landlords will be, uh, will be trying to understand what to deal with the current shopping center and the volumes and the size. They will be more concentrated on the redevelopment, maybe refurbishment and uh, uh, playing the new strategy with the tenant to accommodate the best tenant mix and the best, uh, and the best uh, uh, concept for the shopping center. It means that 2021 and more and the, and the upcoming year, years will remain the more tenant oriented market and tenants will be those players who will say how they would like to deal and how they would like to see the market, what will be the sentiment and where they, they would like to expand. Uh, but also we, uh, we see some impact uh, driven by the COVID and, um, and we see that the several fashion brands already on the international level has announced that they will decrease number of the stores and some of them will be just uh, just exit uh, some of the market and actually during previous year there was no so many impact and there is so no was no so many exit from the baltic market it was just a couple of the brands like uh, river island and parfois but uh, we may see that some of the uh, effect to the baltic market will be uh, during this year and also the next year Right now, it's very hard to say what segment will be more influenced by the COVID uh, situation and what segment will be stressed by the exit from the markets. But certainly, this is uh, this is the fashion segment for sure, and uh, also and uh, the fashion segment and everything which is connected to the apparels and accessories. Uh, but in the same time, we see that the fast food chains will continue to expand and. Uh, it means that the same Burger King and KFC, they will build up the strategy around the standalone buildings and they will continue to lead negotiations with the landlord to get, to get best offer and to secure some of the premises. 
Uh, one of the COVID impact was, uh, was also uh, connected with the stay at home economy. And uh, we saw that during the COVID people was uh, buying more uh, that uh, connected to the furniture, home goods, do it yourself and, uh, and the electronics. But uh, it's very interesting to see that um, basically those uh, players which was uh, opened the strong e-commerce stores and they have secured not only the e-commerce but omni-channel uh, omni channel strategy around, uh, around uh, their brand, they were the winners because uh, during the COVID, uh, mainly those brands which uh, influenced uh, by the strong e-commerce, they get the, the best benefit out of that. And uh, we see that uh, still the stay-at-home economy will remain uh, basically in the positive shape. Uh, maybe after the COVID, um, the, the impact on the, on the homeware segment will be not so significant as it was during the COVID. However, it will be some naturally that people will continue to buy more and more goods uh, from the homeware segment as well. Uh, and right now we may switch to the slide and see what are the top uh, challenges which we may face during that uh, this year. And uh, certainly we didn't show you the vacancy during the previous slides, but uh, this is something uh, crucial and we would like to raise attention of the all participants and the all landlords and the tenants to that figures as well, because figures are uh, quite high. And, um, and in Latvia, this is 7.4%, in Estonia, it's 4.2%, uh, uh, in uh, Lithuania, 2%. But in Lithuania, the vacancy number are, are smaller than in Latvia and Estonia, only due to the fact that uh, Lithuania are comparing the prime shopping center. And of course, as we may know, prime, shop, prime shopping center was not so stressed by the COVID impact. And uh, unfortunately, we see the trend that the vacancy level will increase in the upcoming years. And this is the question, how to deal with that, how to also fight with that vacancy and how to help the field. Because of course, uh, tenants has uh, the choice to, to, to decide where they would like to go, how they would like to expand. And at the same time, there is the planning some of the exits from the market. Uh, but uh, it's everything about the balance and uh, we very hope that the vacancy will not increase more than figures uh, mentioned in the in presentation. However, we will see the real impact in the end of the year. Another challenge, as I have mentioned, uh, some of the international impacts, we may feel that uh, there will be uh, the retail closures in the upcoming year. Uh, right now, this is under question marks. What will be those brands and uh, how many will be of them? But certainly there will be some names which soon will exit the market. Uh, here we would like to mention that those brands who are remain active in terms of the e-commerce and physical stores, they're still uh, making quite good connection with the customers and they are doing everything to, to sell goods by different channels. They will be winners certainly 100%. But at the same time, we know that during, due to the COVID impact, a lot of brands are suffering because they have already ordered some new collections or some of the goods, what, what they have in the store, they cannot right now sell them and they, they cannot uh, turn back them. So there is a lot of expenses for the brands and therefore they are struggling for the moment. And the last but not the, uh, but last and most controversial challenge is about the e-commerce. And uh, by then the e-commerce, this is our friend or this is our enemy. Uh, from the one side, the e-commerce uh, uh, helping us to sell the goods via different channels and somehow it's also supporting the physical stores. But at the same time, when physical stores are closed and people are interested to, and basically they have only one opportunity to buy everything only via e-commerce. Uh, how, how hard for them will be after COVID to turn back to the shops? How hard it will be for them to start to remind some of the brands which maybe do not have some good uh, e-commerce channels for the moment. And this is the challenge, how to bring back this customer flow, how to remain it on the same level. Uh, if we're comparing, for example, to the, uh, to the summer, Pre, uh, previous year, we saw that, uh, for example, in uh, there was some certain period when stores was reopened, 
and the people was turning back to the stores and basically it was it was the same amount of the people which was visiting shopping center in the in the previous year uh, however it was just the impact after the first wave after second wave people become more uh, careful about all restriction and also they get in use with that e-commerce channels they become quite good friends and uh, they become quite uh, quite um, they feel comfortable right now to buy some goods via e-commerce and um, what we see that after second wave of the covid it will be more harder to more harder to explain why they need to visit the physical stores However, I, I would say that we are ready for that fight and we are ready to show how, how we need to deal with that. And um, let's see in the end of the year, what will be the real impact on the e-commerce stores uh, and the, uh, versus physical stores. Uh, but um, it's, maybe this is not the right time to, to evaluate the results of, of uh, that questions. And uh, I propose to come back to that questions in the end of this year and see how it went. It was shortly about the retail. Please uh, let us know in case you have some other questions. And right now I'm also giving floor to the next participant of our presentation. Thank you, Evgenia. And uh, we go further to office market uh, with uh, Sandra Yovesaita presenting uh, about uh, the market. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks uh, for finding time to listen to us today. So I will be presenting office market for all three Baltic countries. And um, yeah, we received uh, a lot of uh, prior questions from the participants and I was surprised that the majority of them was uh, to the office sector. So I guess there is a, quite a lot of concerns around the sector. So I will try to answer them, maybe not specifically, but uh, going through the presentation. Of course, the majority relates to pandemic, construction levels, um, and uh, how, how the office market will, will deal with that and what will be the impact. So let's start with a brief uh, overview of last year. Um, as my colleague Starmo and Evgenia said that last year was quite good. Uh, the same is applicable for uh, office segment. Uh, the performance uh, was good despite the pandemic setbacks. Um, it was, um, good activity in the construction uh, um, site, it was good activity in the take-up site, in some markets um, uh, demand was uh, um, like exceeded uh, the previous 2019 numbers, um, in, in some markets uh, like in Riga it was uh, presenting similar numbers and, and good uh, and showed good performance in Tallinn as well. So in general, it did not affect it asking rental uh, rates, uh, and uh, we expected that uh, this trend uh, of uh, kind of uh, stable asking rental levels uh, should remain throughout 2021, as long as uh, we don't see another major impact coming from like either COVID situation or um, some unexpected economic situation or downturns. As um, I mean, if we're judging the situation today, uh, the rental levels um, should not be affected. But of course, uh, the, the market has uh, shifted uh, towards uh, the tenant side and um, there is increasing competition for attracting the tenants. Uh, so. Uh, the, the landlords are more inclined to offer other financial incentives such as uh, rent-free periods or uh, fit-out contributions um, or yeah, some other maybe flexibility clauses. So if we look at the next slide, uh, we prepared um, a summary situation of existing supply today in the market and what is happening here. So 
course, we are looking into the new construction levels and we are looking already at the uh, vacancy plus the hidden vacancy levels. Uh, this is the numbers what we know today uh, and the hidden vacancy is something that may occur in, in bigger numbers uh, later on in the year as uh, some of the companies are still under decision making time whether they will release uh, more space to the market or to retain that space. So I also wanted to mention that this construction levels is uh, what is at the moment being constructed. Did this does not mean that um, all of it will be delivered in 2021. It's uh, most in most of the cases it is spreading uh, up until 2023. Um, and uh, yeah, but this is what we are currently constructing. Well, summarizing uh, what will be uh, forecasted to be implemented this year in all uh, capitals and uh, the um, expectant vacancy levels and, and currently known hidden vacancy levels, we predict that um, vacancy in all of the capitals will vary between eight to 11 percent, uh, which shows pretty sustainable situation for the office market. Um, this is um, something that just gives more balance for, for the tenants uh, to pick uh, the properties. Um, yeah, uh, also maybe a little bit about individual markets. Uh, so in, in Lithuania, we will see majority of uh, the new supply uh, impacting our market. We predict that uh, uh, at the end of this year, we will construct around 128,000 square meters. In Latvia, we, don't, we do not see any notable um, uh, new deliveries in the market. Uh, uh, the, the total expected delivery is around 6,000 square meters. So uh, market will work with existing uh, developments. And in Tallinn also numbers of new construction uh, for 2021 is rather uh, moderate and uh, amounts to 29,000 square meters. So again, the market will have uh, opportunity to work with the existing vacancies and, and hidden vacancies. Um, if to go to the demand side of things, uh, uh, Anastasia, maybe you can show me next slide, please. Um, so we can also state uh, that in all capital markets, the occupier base is rather strong. Uh, this is especially notable in Vilnius and Tallinn. Uh, there is like a lot of ICT and uh, GBS centers that are planning expansion, uh, though this expansion uh, may not always convert into expanding the office, uh, that, does, that definitely converts in sizing the office. So, and in Latvia also we have um, um, the good activity pick up since last year, which is uh, expected to continue in 2021 as uh, uh, many notable occupiers are looking for uh, space and uh, also market has attracted already uh, three new big um, names uh, in the GBS industry as well. So this occupier base is, is getting stronger. And in Latvia, the demand is also partially driven by the existing new supply and uh, a simple fact that uh, occupiers has um, options uh, to, to choose from right now. If to look uh, a little bit uh, by the uh, sizes of, of the businesses, so majority of activity that we see today uh, is happening in the small companies. Um, this most likely is driven by the simple decision maker that there is no many approvals uh, levels needed so they can, they can do the decisions. Um, uh, medium sized uh, companies are a little bit on hold uh, uh, and um, if uh, they will plan some new relocations, uh, they are considering numbers uh, either to 
to remain uh, at uh, like uh, zero changes in terms of uh, space needed or around 30% reduction. Uh, for, this, uh, for this segment of occupiers, most likely they will need uh, to do relocation to do the downsizing because in existing offices, it becomes quite a challenge to, to reduce the space. Um, also, I must note that for any occupier to reduce the space, there must be actual um, clause or provision in the, in the agreement allowing to do that. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, occupiers are just uh, simply breaking the agreements or deciding to, to downsize them and stop paying rent. Uh, so basically, it's either a provision in the agreement to exercise such a clause, or uh, then it's... Um, discussions with landlord about the possibilities of subleasing. Uh, bigger companies uh, uh, are still un under assessment of uh, the uh, work from home impact, uh, and I think this will continue throughout the years, uh, at least uh, another two or three years, uh, and uh, they are trying to model plans of uh, business expansion, um, also work from home impact, uh, and, and, and see how they, how they proceed. And uh, of course, uh, the, the biggest occupiers, uh, so that's uh, something above 300 employees in, in all three markets, uh, still also has a relocation potential in this year. Um, but of course, it's a little bit hard to predict whether they will implement that, but uh, at least we are aware of, uh, of uh, some plans of some companies. So I think to sum up uh, the impact um, uh, for um, for office market uh, 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 for upcoming uh, 2021, um, so uh, we will still have rather balanced market. Uh, of course, uh, the competition for attracting tenants uh, uh, will remain and 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 will increase. Uh, we do not uh, see. Uh, rental level uh, decrease, uh, but we see financial packages increase. Uh, also, we see that occupiers are less uh, willing to invest uh, capital into premises outfitting. So uh, landlords uh, should uh, take into consideration uh, bigger uh, capital allocations for the fit out and perhaps uh, spreading investment later on on top of the rental levels. Um, and this also brings opportunity for a longer lease agreements uh, uh, as well. So uh, this uh, not willingness to invest into uh, fit outs also opens opportunities for flex office market operators and uh, for uh, occupiers trying to sublease their premises. Um, because in majority of the cases, uh, those premises are already fitted out and, and has the furniture installed. So it's kind of easy solution if the layout is adaptable to, to the occupiers. And of course, work from home is here to stay. And uh, we believe that uh, this uh, effect uh, sh should last and, and will be modeled in uh, all future relocation scenarios. So that that will be all for me today, I think. Thank you, Sandra. And uh, we move forward uh, to industrial market uh, to be presented by Kaspers Grazulis. Please, Kaspers. Yeah. Uh, hi, hello. Um, 2020 has been busy for us here in Colliers. And uh, I ask you to join and dive in and explore what has happened in 2020 industrial market and what kind of trends we see in the uh, upcoming future. So uh, moving on, uh, um, in the next slide, you'll see the basic uh, criteria of the market uh, for industrial segment. And uh, if you are looking at industrial stock and pipeline for all three Baltic countries, and we see Tallinn leading with 1.7 million square meters on the roof. And actually for, uh, for Estonia, the market in general uh, in 2020 was driven by small scale projects projects, uh, basically 27 projects accumulated up to 72 square meters, 72,000 square meters under the roof. Uh, after Tallinn, we have Riga with 1.2 million square meters. And actually for Riga, this was quite significant here. And that was largest development volume in the last decade with 150,000 
parameters being delivered. If we are moving to Lithuania, and basically the stock is distributed between three cities, Vilnius, Kaunas, and Klaipeda. And uh, for Lithuania 2020, we saw increase of uh, stock uh, by 50% compared to 2019. And it was basically evenly distributed between Vilnius and Klaipeda. And also for, for Lithuania, it was significant year since Vilnius had uh, seen the greatest increase of stock since 2007. And for Klaipeda, this was actually the historically biggest increase for the market. If you're looking at distribution of industrial space by type, then we see that in Tallinn, actually the built to own, built to suit projects are dominating the market. Nevertheless, uh, if we're looking at 2020, 2021, then mainly the projects that are in pipeline and had been delivered to the market were evenly distributed between built to suit and speculative projects. And for speculative, the development was mainly driven by small scale stock office projects. Uh, still, uh, we see a dominance of built to own projects. Uh, as an example, in 2022, we saw delivery of wood uh, logistics center, eight logistics. Lo Center. So basically, the trend is continuing. If you're looking at Riga and Vilnius, then um, the situation is completely different. We see large volume of speculative projects in the market. Also, uh, the tendency depends year on year. If you're looking at 2020, then both for, for Lithuania, for Latvia, Built to suits and built to own projects dominated the market. The Rimi distribution center were delivered little in Riga. Um, Lantana in Kaunas, uh, SBA uh, logistics center as well. So, uh, depending on the year, uh, we see slight change uh, of the type that's been de delivered. If you're looking at 2021, then again for Riga and for Vilnius. Speculative projects are dominating. We have Syrian development uh, present both in Vilnius, in Kaunas, in Riga, uh, as well as um, as well as Trans Expeditia in Vilnius and Pilar and Fiche in Riga. If you're looking at main uh, trends for vacancy and for rents, then basically in Estonia and in Latvia, downward pressure for rents continues to intensify. Where in Lithuania, we are already experienced downward correction for prime rents during 2020. Uh, but in general, rents will remain stable uh, with potential downward correction for upper rental levels in Riga. If you're looking at the vacancy that depending from city to city, uh, we saw increase in the vacancy at the end of the year in Tallinn due to several stock office projects being delivered in Riga. The vacancy increased due to Rimi relocation. And we saw also increase in Klaipeda due to active development. If we're looking at Vilnius and Kaunas, then vacancy is pretty low in Kaunas due to lack of development and in Vilnius due to strong demand. Uh, so, but in general, the vacancy will remain stable in Tallinn. We see potential increase in Riga, Vilnius and Kaunas due to active development in 2021. And in Klaipeda, we foresee that the vacancy will accumulate. If we are moving forward with the main trends for 2021, so I want to stress out five things that we, we are seeing in the market in general. But first of all, this is a market shift to tenant favorable lease conditions. And uh, this means a competitive market for landlords. Incentives are higher than normal. So landlords are more, more inclined to negotiate various aspects of the lease and a more aggressive offering incentives to keep tenants in place. So as a result, headline and net effect to rents across the market are under downward pressure and are likely to decline in short or medium term. So this is the trend we already saw in Lithuania where, trend, where the rents uh, have been corrected and we will see that trend happening in Latvia as well. Moving on to stock offices, and basically, if we look at the stock office, then Tallinn market has been dominating for a couple of last years. And also uh, for 2020, 12 stock office, office projects with GLA of 40,000 square meters. And, uh, and again, in 2021, most of speculative development will be driven by stock office and small business units with Hammerhead Pavorta being main developers in the market. 
Nevertheless, despite um, new supply of stock offices and premises continue to show a good absorption ratio. And in upcoming 2021, 2022, we'll see more than 100,000 stock offices addition expected to fall in market. If you're looking at Latvia and Lithuania, then situation is completely different. In Latvia, we have three projects currently under development. In Lithuania, there are six projects mainly focused in Kaunas. But the main difference between uh, Latvia, Lithuania, and compared to Estonia is that in Latvia and Lithuania, the projects are bigger. Basically, uh, we will see large scales to office development happening in the market. So momentum has started. We will see projects popping up. Uh, as an example, there's one project in the wilderness at the moment in design stage with, with, with GLA, more than 20,000 square meters per project for, for first stage. So basically trend is uh, happening. New projects are coming in the market. And for Latvia and Lithuania, this means more large scale stock office projects being delivered. Uh, moving on to uh, the next trend, and this is e-commerce. And uh, actually, the, the pandemic has accelerated the growth of last mile delivery services and logistics for e-commerce companies. Uh, mainly ones that were highly impacted were parcel delivery service providers, online lead retailers, and actually the retailers that had to switch to online retail. So in Latvia, we saw Omniva expansion, Itella opened their distribution center, uh, DPD expanded in Lithuania. Also, local online stores are expanding, increasing stock and securing faster deliveries. Uh, we saw M port in uh, Vilnius, M79 in, in Riga, both online shops expanding. We'll see weekend pickup point opening uh, up in, in Tallinn. And basically, fast growing e commerce will continue fueling, for, uh, fueling demand for strategically located parcel and logistics terminals. And we will see more expansion of online shops. The next trend to uh, point out is uh, development focus in specific locations. Basically, this depends more or less city from city. And if you're looking at uh, Tallinn, then I want to point out a uh, historically popular location that I perished. It's hard to road around this. And uh, in this location in 2020, 57% of the stock came into the market. And we see also for 2021 trend that uh, more than 50% of pipeline is concentrated in this area. If you're looking at uh, Riga, then 90%, 95% of new uh, addition uh, of, of the stock are concentrated in Riga city borders. And to dive deeper in the locations, there are three main locations to point out. This is airport area, this is Breling area where Rimi of little distribution centers are located, and this is Rumbula with the uh, steering development and uh, still are doing active speculative development at the moment. If you're moving to, to Vilnius, then for Vilnius, basically speculative development is being driven by two companies and marking two specific locations in the city, being a uh, city in Liepkalnis and Trans Expeditia. And uh, the last trend I want to point out is that the big players still prefer build to suit, build to own approach. Uh, we saw Rimi and Lidl in, in Riga, Pakendi, Cascus, HK, Scan Production in Tallinn. Uh, Lantana and Klaipeda, but in general, the market will see consolidation and relocation of several large tenants uh, moving to new, more modern premises. And this, this trend will continue also for upcoming years. Uh, moving on to the next slide uh, and moving to main challenges, uh, well, we want to point out uh, two, two main things, which is, uh, first of all, land availability for development. And again, coming from city to city, uh, the issues are different, but uh, the challenge is the same. So land for large scale development is not so available. And if we are looking at uh, Latvia, the first of all, it's uh, the, the issue is zoning. And uh, well, we're struggling to change the zoning in Riga and Marupa municipality. And uh, for once, for developers who decide to take matters in their own hands, uh, well, and change zoning via local plan. Actually, COVID restrictions makes uh, public hearings impossible that slows down development. 
So uh, also on the other hand, large plots with uh, rice zoning are typically located outside of the city with the uh, lack of infrastructure, and that's an issue. If you're looking at uh, Vilnius, then uh, the situation is more or less similar. For large scale plots, availability is limited in Vilnius as well in Kaunas. So to get right zoning, uh, developers have to move out further away from the city where they meet uh, issues with lack of infrastructure. Uh, also one issue in Vilnius is the new infrastructure ta tax uh, without diversifying development. But we hope that this is more or less temporary issue that developers are working together with the municipality. And we hope that this won't leave a uh, large impact on the development. If you're looking at uh, Tallinn, then basically land market has been inactive for past years and only least recently come at large level of uh, demand from industrial developers. And accordingly, plots, they're not ready and require detailed planning process to be done. So this means, again, longer development um, time uh, to, to start construction. Uh, then again, for, for Tallinn, uh, let's see if uh, the ring road uh, completion maybe can open up some new locations. And the uh, last thing I want to point, point out, and uh, this uh, will be a challenge for some of the property owners, then again, uh, this uh, will mark the start of the new trend. And we see that older buildings are starting to compete with the new projects and the development. And there are more, uh, more energy efficient projects popping up in the market. And some developers favor environmentally friendly technologies and are planning to obtain sustainability certification. Uh, we have examples of uh, West Hub, SBA Logistics Center in uh, Lithuania, a green park with uh, energy efficient solutions in Riga, as well as A6 by Pilar are planning to acquire green certificates. Uh, so overall, uh, sustainability is, expect is expected to gradually become a more important trend in industrial and logistics market in the nearest future. And uh, this is something interesting that I want to monitor and see how this expands in upcoming years. So briefly, that's uh, the main, uh, what has been happening in the market and what we could expect if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat or contact us directly. And let's move forward with the hotel market. Thank you, Kaspers. Uh, yes, and now we have finally reached the last uh, segment we would like to discuss today. It's a uh, hotel market hospitality segment uh, to be presented by Maya Oya. Please, Maya. Yeah, thank you, Anastasia. And uh, hello to all from my side as well. Uh, unfortunately, 2020 wasn't a very good year for hospitality market, as you all know. So uh, let's sum uh, up uh, last year and uh, let's see if the future is more bright than, than it was uh, previously. Uh, so uh, it's no news that it suffered the most uh, uh, together with the entertainment, the restaurants, somewhat, somewhat uh, also retail. Uh, while the first months were very good, record-breaking months uh, for all the uh, Baltic countries, then uh, starting from March, uh, April, uh, the occupancy numbers uh, fell drastically down to basically zero. Uh, and um, uh, while uh, some, uh, most of the uh, hotels in, in Baltics, or at least uh, half of them, uh, uh, managed to stay open, then, uh, then for example, in Europe, in, in uh, quite many countries, uh, they were forced to uh, shut down by the government. Uh, so in overall, uh, uh, because of the lockdown and then the, the virus, uh, the occupancy numbers fell uh, for all countries uh, from around uh, 60 to 70 percent in 2019 to uh, uh, 20, 30 percent in uh, 2020. And uh, that's uh, mainly because of uh, lack of international tourists, uh, which, uh, which number fell uh, depending on a, on a country uh, around uh, seven, uh, uh, 65, 75 percent. 
and due the due the lack of uh, tourists, uh, many hotels were closed down. For example, uh, as you see also from the graph, uh, in Tallinn, uh, as of end uh, 2020, uh, 20 uh, hotels or uh, approximately 30% of the total number of the hotels uh, were closed. And Riga, the number was even higher. It was uh, 48 uh, hotels. And then the, that the makes 51% uh, of the total number of the hotels. Uh, while some uh, hotels uh, are using the opportunity uh, and then upgrading themselves, for example, in Tallinn, we have uh, Radisson uh, Blue that is uh, uh, upgrading itself uh, and then will be opened as Radisson Collection uh, in 2022. And then uh, also um, uh, Tallinn City Hotel and then the Nordic Forum Hotel. Uh, but uh, some uh, smaller hotels are closed uh, and then we don't know if, uh, if they will open up again uh, or not. So, so let's, let's see. Uh, however, uh, although the beginning of the year was uh, quite harsh, uh, the summer showed quite good numbers. Uh, there was also some international travel, um, mainly between uh, neighboring countries. And uh, the most benefited uh, uh, seaside hotels, spas, regional areas, uh, which were called alternative uh, for, for um, resorts abroad. And uh, as seen from the graph, uh, for Estonia, the main tourist groups were Finland, Latvia, Russia, uh, and, uh, and uh, for uh, other Baltic countries, also neighboring uh, countries uh, for Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Russia, and for uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Ukraine, and Poland. Uh, despite of pandemic, also some new hotel rooms were added to the market. Uh, for uh, Tallinn, the number was uh, uh, quite high. It was 475 rooms, uh, which included the uh, city box hotels uh, in the harbor area, Lembitu Superior Hotel, and then the redeveloped uh, Oruhab uh, Hotel. And uh, in Vilnius, uh, 120 rooms were added by uh, Parkin by Radisson, which is located uh, next to Vilnius Airport. And also, uh, although it's not uh, in the graph uh, or in the table, also in, in Kaunas was opened uh, a new Moxi Kaunas Central Hotel. Uh, so that's uh, shortly about 2020, uh, and then the, let's move next uh, to the next slide, and then see what the hospitality market trends are for 2021. First of all, domestic demand will uh, very likely recover. Uh, we have seen that already from last year, that uh, when the weather is nice, uh, people are outside. Uh, uh, the numbers go down and then the, hopefully the same will be will be this year uh, and of course uh, the main uh, areas where the people will be moving are, are uh, regional areas and then the local uh, that is mainly supported by local tourism uh, more will uh, profit the uh, regional hotels as said uh, and spa hotels uh, uh, for example, in Estonia, uh, for 2020, the numbers for spa hotel, hotels were quite good because we didn't have uh, that many restrictions as, as uh, Latvia and uh, Lithuania did uh, in, in the autumn uh, when the numbers for uh, capital city hotels uh, turnover numbers were down by, for example, uh, for uh, approximately 60-70%. Then for spa hotels in, in Estonia, it, it was around 10 to 30%, depending on a, on a hotel and, and the location. Uh, then international chains continue actively looking for new options in all Baltic countries. Uh, we have seen that uh, in Estonia, uh, we have seen also in other countries, uh, but uh, in Estonia, we can uh, give a good example. For example, 
uh, Collins Estonia just mediated one management agreement uh, in the end of last year, uh, according to which, or thanks to which, Ocker and Novate Living Apart Hotel will open its uh, doors hopefully in 2022 uh, in Tallinn Harbor, Harbor area. Also, uh, Radisson and uh, Hilton have announced uh, about their uh, expansion pan plans. And uh, Hyatt has also announced uh, that they are planning to open um, the first Hyatt branded hotel in, St in uh, Tallinn in uh, 2023. So far, the results are, have been better for hotels that are operating under a chain. Uh, in, in general, that's, that's related to workforce and then the uh, better avail uh, availability to cope with the situation, to manage the team, uh, have them circulating maybe between different hotels. Uh, and uh, that uh, that's more beneficial than just uh, if you have uh, one ho a hotel that is uh, operated by, by one owner and then the, the same team. And then um, uh, occupancy of hotels in capital cities will uh, probably continue to be lower than in region areas, as uh, it's very dependent on uh, international travel and um, corporate tourism, uh, which is very difficult to predict when it will recover. As uh, in addition to virus, it, it, it depends how many airlines uh, will be still available uh, and then how many routes they will open. So uh, that's, uh, that's the case for capital cities. Uh, new developments will be definitely postponed uh, because of the uncertainty of the, of the, of the market. Uh, although there are at least uh, 1,000 rooms in pipeline, for example, in, in Tallinn and Vilnius, uh, we don't know exactly when, when the hotels will open. Uh, the hotels which are under, under construction, of, the, of course, they will continue. But for uh, new uh, projects, uh, the market needs to be more stable. Uh, then the market will see some distressed hotel sales. Uh, there are some hotels on the market looking for new owners, uh, but most of them are uh, smaller hotels and uh, have had problems already before uh, the COVID, uh, or the owners have made their decisions to sell the hotels uh, before uh, 2020. Uh, although the owners don't want to give up uh, in pricing, uh, we have seen that uh, the discounts uh, such hotel, hotels should make is around uh, 10 to 20 percent, for some hotels even up to 30 percent. Uh, so, so that uh, has to be taken into account. Uh, uh, in Estonia or in the Baltics, we don't know any core properties. Uh, uh, open on the market for sale, but uh, according to our colleagues from EMEA region, they have said that for, for uh, EMEA region, uh, the, the pricing of the core properties uh, in terms of hotels is the same. So no, no changes there. Uh, and the last one, uh, one from this slide, uh, a few smaller independent uh, hotels will change their use. Um, for example, in Vilnius, uh, there are some smaller hotels uh, sold that are planned uh, to be turned into apartment buildings. Uh, in Tallinn, we just mediated uh, one uh, old town hotel that was bought by the uh, neighboring property owner. And uh, the plan is to connect the buildings and, and uh, then it will be used for the, for the owner's own business. And uh, to give one uh, international example, then uh, uh, in Georgia, one uh, central city uh, hotel uh, will be turned into medical clinic. So let's see if, if we will see similar examples in Baltics as well or not. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, main ch challenges for the hospitality market. Well, the, first of all, of course, uncertainty related to the future. Uh, all we know by now is 
nothing is certain. We, we made plans and then predictions uh, uh, during first half of uh, last year. And we hope that this uh, virus maybe some, somehow will disappear or, or it won't affect our lives so much uh, in the autumn and, and in uh, 2021. But the, the re reality is that the virus is here to stay and we, we have to uh, live with it. Uh, so we don't know how many different mutations there will, will be, how the vaccine will, will uh, work. Uh, so let, let's see. Uh, however, there are several institutions uh, that predict that the uh, main markets will, will um, recover by 2024. Uh, some say it's 2023, some 2025, but uh, what the future brings, probably we are much smarter in a, in a year from now. Uh, the challenge is also keeping the hotels operating. Uh, the situation is very critical to everyone. Uh, for some smaller hotels, uh, uh, the owners have said, the operators have said that they have just a few months um, savings, uh, savings for keeping the hotels operating. Uh, while large chains in general are a bit more capitalized, and then they are more uh, able to restructure their work, the labor force and costs. Uh, however, there are quite many global examples uh, that show that um, average results have been better for uh, hotels that have kept themselves open uh, uh, through uh, uh, during uh, critical times and um, have maintained client confidence uh, than for those who are uh, who have uh, closed themselves down and then, then restarted the operation. Uh, of course, regaining the guest's confidence is, is uh, uh, more uh, uh, harder for those hotels who have uh, closed themselves uh, down and then the easier for, uh, for hotels uh, that have stayed open and that and applied all these um, hygiene and safety measures that we have uh, applied for a year now. Uh, financing of new projects is extremely uh, hard because uh, banks are not willing to give out money for for the projects uh, that they don't know uh, that if if there's any income in the future or or uh, what's what's the actual situation in in uh, a few, a few years time. So all the projects uh, started now uh, that will be started now uh, should be financed either on equity or there be, uh, should be some alternative other options for, for um, building the projects. And uh, the last one after the market recovery, uh, finding the workforce again. Uh, we probably all know that the, the, the hotels uh, faced the problem before crisis. There were not enough uh, uh, workforce uh, for all the these like uh, usual and then cleaning uh, uh, chefs, uh, that kind of stuff. And then if these uh, people are now laid off, then uh, for finding uh, new team again after the market uh, will recover then it will be much much uh, larger challenge uh, that it was uh, previously so uh, that was more or less about uh, market uh, uh, hotel market uh, let's stay safe and then uh, hopefully the the summer will be much much better than last year thank you myla thank you by this moment, so we have finished to present the main findings of our annual overview, and uh, it's time to move further uh, with the panel discussion uh, uh, called "Looking Forward: uh, Looking for the Opportunities to Grow in Turbulent Times." Uh, the panel uh, discussion will be led by Angela Karesnikova, and we have invited some special guests to participate in it. Let me introduce them. It's Martin Otza, Chief Investment Officer at East Capital. It's Marty Cross, CEO and partner at Tapser Latvia, and Petris Senkals, CEO at Beecher. Uh, 
if uh, the panelists and the moderator could turn on the cameras and uh, audio. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. 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 Uh, gentlemen, thank you for joining and, and uh, good morning to all the attendees. Thank you for staying with us for, for the panel. And uh, uh, what we want to do today during the panel is, of course, reflect a little bit on the changes and, and the challenges and maybe lessons we learned during the past year. But as you can see from our title, our main focus today will be on opportunities, which uh, current situation in commercial real estate segment brings to, to, to us in, in different segments. And I want to jump straight in as we are a bit short on time and Patrice, I'll probably start with you and to, to give a little bit of a background for, for our listeners. So you come from construction background and from that, which as a company has naturally somewhat evolved to being uh, one of the leading uh, industrial developers in Latvian market at the moment. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but now you have already three projects completed, uh, more than 85,000 square meters of uh, industrial and warehouse space done in, in uh, Riga near the airport area. So um, maybe you can um, travel back a little bit uh, and uh, travel back to January of 2020 and remember what were you thinking about your, let's say, next five years, what your plan was, and then come back to today's situation and, and tell us if anything has changed for you in your plans uh, and in the projects you, you plan to develop in the future. Okay, so um, as, as you may know, we are uh, mostly industrial developers, so, so our plans was uh, to develop at least 150,000 square meters near uh, Airport Riga of industrial premises, uh, mostly logistics and for e-commerce. And our plan was to start uh, participating in, on the other bank of the Daugava River. And uh, we wanted to go to Estonian and Lithuanian markets with, with our uh, industrial developments. And I, I would like to tell that these uh, plans have very sliced, uh, slightly changed because uh, uh, industry was uh, quite good for us. And uh, the, the only thing maybe we have decided um, as we see that thereafter pandemic might be some changes, uh, we, we started to develop uh, uh, apartment buildings too. So, so this is our main thing that has changed uh, during uh, during that period. But it was been quite quite good time for us. Uh, so, in terms of the volume you still plan to develop, it uh, more or less remained the same. And uh, uh, if I ask about uh, how you feel about the uh, occupancy and, and the speed on how you were able to lease the space, because uh, it happened so that, that your last park uh, was uh, constructed uh, in the mixed, midst of the pandemic. And uh, did you feel any changes in that regard? Uh, during like like first uh, period of uh, pandemic, uh, when when everybody was very stressed, we, we really felt that a lot of uh, companies uh, push a break and and, and hold uh, for the contracts. But afterwards, uh, for some uh, tenants, it even uh, went better. And uh, for for some companies that already were in our parks, they they wanted to uh, get more space because the businesses. For some of them, were growing, growing four times. So, so it was quite interesting time for us and for them. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel any pressure on the rent rates in the segment? Um, yeah, we're starting to feel. If we compare our uh, developments in, in the first uh, project, I would like to say that eighty percent of the clients I, I met uh, went for the contract. And of course, now for the latest development, it is like maybe 5%, 3%, maybe something. It, it's like um, a lot of work for our uh, team to, to make it happen. And of course, more lease-free periods and stuff like that. And, and, and it definitely will increase on that. So client will be the one who, who will dictate the, the, uh, the rules uh, in, in the next year and, and years to come. 
What about the construction costs? Uh, did it become easier to develop or uh, this didn't go together with French rate pressure? Uh, yeah, it was, it was very interesting situation actually, because uh, when started first uh, wave of pandemic, uh, we saw that a lot of companies reduced the prices and we saw that now was uh, sales are, are starting, but you know, now, I see it as, as a big risk, actually, because prices for construction is not getting down. And I wonder why is that? Because in my opinion, I mean, in my opinion, it should be going down, but it's, it's not at the moment. So, so it's very strange. It's for, for metal and for concrete structures, it's going up and quite rapidly. So, so it's very interesting. We, we haven't expected this, uh, this to be happening. Yeah, so it sounds like a, a bit of the challenge, but I'm sure with, with your experience, you'll manage to balance those things out. Uh, and maybe a last follow-up question for you before we move to Martin. Uh, what is the next project you, you plan to develop? Oh, we have a few projects in uh, for, for development for this year. We start uh, Airport Park the second phase. And we're starting uh, Ulmania Park, second phase, and maybe even uh, starting, it, it will depend on uh, tenants and maybe even the third phase will be started uh, this year. So for, for this year, at least, uh, I would like to say 50,000 square meters, we, we plan to build in, in Riga. And, and we will try to, of course, uh, go for Estonian market but it's uh, it's uh, some challenges there too so so we'll see good luck it sounds like there's be uh, there's going to be quite a competition in the industrial segment in the following years thanks to pitch yeah i, I think it's good for for uh, development and uh, i think that of course the uh, prices might be suffering a bit but uh, anyway we will uh, we will be able to get some international companies to baltics and uh, I think it's, are they going to, to, to Riga, Vilnius or, or Tallinn, it's uh, not, not too, too important, but I think for all Baltic states important that those companies are, are uh, present here and, and it will definitely make a good impact on, on our uh, all three economies. Definitely. Martin, let's continue with you. Um, so um, East Capital is classically known as a cash flow investor, but uh, recently uh, I came across the information that you have acquired a land plot also for industrial development uh, near Tallinn and, and quite sizable one as far as I know, more than uh, 150,000 square meters could be built in there. So uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about this land plot and what you plan there. And uh, for me, it would be very interesting to know if it's a new strategy of East Capital there to stay or it is more of a one-time uh, opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hello. Thank you, Angela. Yeah, indeed, uh, East Capital. Yeah, we have bought uh, 32 hectares of land uh, in Rai Parish uh, next to the Tallinn Ring Road just recently. Uh, which allows yeah, to build 150,000 uh, square meters of leasable area at least. And, um, and the background is that it was a, it, it was a public auction organized by the local Rai Parish uh, where we participated and we managed to win this auction. The, beside the, you know, a location at this, as, at, uh, this location has been um, pointed out in the previous um, uh, presentations. It's also unique in terms of uh, this, uh, this area consists only of six land plots and, um, and it allows to build pretty sizable buildings, which are um, very good opportunity and I guess uh, the, the, the market needs them. So with sizable means that uh, uh, with the properties with the food footprint of let's say 30 plus thousand square meters uh, under one roof so what but the reason why we really as a being as a traditional asset manager uh, in the baltics we moved into this development i mean there are let's say probably three main reasons i would um, uh, would point out the first is you know uh, is the limited supply of uh, 
of institutional uh, uh, properties available on the market, which was, you know, clearly pointed out by, by Margus in, 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 um, uh, in the first presentation. So I guess as we are being an active uh, phase of, uh, of our fourth fund um, um, uh, property acquisitions, where we basically have a fund of 200 million euros of equity and which allows us to invest nearly 350 million euros into the uh, capital uh, cities uh, properties, then, I mean, this opportunity, of course, creates a good pipeline. And I, I guess then the second reasoning behind that is um, why we did this so uh, this step is, is is the demand for for the logistic areas what we clearly see from our portfolio our existing portfolio is uh, is having uh, nearly 200,000 square meters of uh, modern logistic areas in Tallinn and Riga which probably makes us the largest largest landlord in the logistic areas in the Baltics as well, or one of the largest, but uh, those 50 tenants who occupy this 200,000, I mean, we are you know, managing those, those tenants on a daily basis and we see and, uh, you know, the movement and their, you know, how their business is developing. And uh, we nearly had any vacancy within the last 10 years in our logistic premises in the, in the Baltics. And the third reason is probably more like in our internal uh, ambition in the East Capital Group to, to develop a new kind of um, product range, uh, you know, entering into greenfield development. Uh, beside, you know, being, let's say, 15 years already an active asset management uh, side in the Baltics, then, I mean, we, we still have some knowledge to, to be put into this business. So, so uh, this is a uh, you know, nice path to explore. So um, yeah, that um, for, of course it, it is the first deal for us uh, with this development, uh, but I, I suspect that we will continue to explore those options and uh, we wouldn't definitely rule out uh, you know, another development possibilities. Very good, thank you. Well, if there is no supply available, you need to create one. So, so I think this is a good strategy. But uh, maybe you can elaborate a little bit more, or also on the source of equity for 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 this development. Was uh, how was it done? Was it uh, the wish of the uh, investors to do something like that, and then you found the project, or you found the project first and you had to commit some equity? And if so, was it difficult or not? Well, first we found the uh, opportunity to buy this and then, um, then actually uh, it's not very public, but it's not a secret that the acquisition was made by East Capital owners uh, in equity, 100%. So we have not committed any specific in, uh, investor into this uh, project yet. Uh, we will, wouldn't rule out uh, of putting our, you know, uh, kind of uh, knowledge together on the one basket with with some of the developers or at, definitely with some some large construction company. Uh, so uh, yeah, first there was an idea, and then the capital availability. At at this stage, we we sold it with uh, with our mother company resources. But I guess you know when we speak about you know global market, you know, the capital availability and referring to the global markets, I guess this is not uh, kind of an you know, issue. It is some challenges included, but I guess to find the capital for the, for the nice product is, is, is rather easier. And then of for course this- segments, uh, Sorry to interrupt, oh, for all yeah. segments or industrial in particular? I guess, I mean, <laughs> Industrial or you know pure logistics could be called as a kind of a new Tesla in, in the context of the public equities. In that sense, probably uh, probably logistics is the most you know uh, welcomed uh, asset class, but as well resi residential for sure. What we probably learn later from Marty, but uh, but in our in, uh, in commercial segments, for, yeah, uh, logistics is the most preferable uh, asset class right now. Yeah, for sure. Well, Martin, thank you. Thank you for, for uh, insight and, and good luck in new endeavors. 
let's say so. Uh, Marty, let's move uh, move to you next. And uh, uh, well, Hapser is mostly known for uh, their residential developments, but uh, today uh, I would like to talk to you about a big project you you are managing here in Riga, uh, named Krasta City. And uh, it is an office development. And again, for, for our listeners, just a little bit of background. So uh, the land plot for this development was acquired back in 2004, 2005. Uh, but then during the crisis, uh, all the plans for it were, were frozen. And uh, Hapsar joined the owners uh, back in 2019 to restart and revive uh, this project. Uh, so uh, my question to you would be, uh, probably if you can describe the project itself uh, in, in a few words and uh, mm, uh, tell us about your, your plans and uh, did they change from 2019 at all or, or you are moving forward full speed? Uh, thank you very much, Angela. So yeah, to maybe briefly summarize our project, then um, Krasta City will be a business complex in Riga next to the city center in, uh, I would say, very unique location by the river Daugava and on the, on the crossroads of Magistral Roads. So um, around the, the construction volume is around 150,000 uh, square, me square meters and um, we're planning to develop it in, uh, in six stages, starting from, uh, from next year. Uh, and and uh, we plan that the last stage will be completed by the year 2030. So, uh, so it will be a very, very long term development. And um, during this, uh, let's say, concept development phase, uh, when we joined uh, with the owners, then um, we built that location and we understood that it's a, a perfect place for a modern uh, working environment. So, um, we are planning to so that the majority of the space is taken by the offices but also uh, we are putting a lot of emphasis on the common areas and the areas that are for the service providers that are adding the extra value uh, to the office tenants um, also we we really see that it's important to uh, to put an effort on the on the accessibility of the of the complex and for example, we have uh, all the first floors uh, are fully accessible for the public in order so that you can integrate the buildings with the river promenade and with the city environment. So uh, to sum it up, our, our, our ambition, I would say, is that the Krasta city will be one day the best place to work in Riga. But um, if to answer your question regarding the um, the, whether we have changed anything, then I would say that uh, our, our approach is not changed. And, and for us, uh, this COVID time has been, um, I would say, it has fit to our, our, our mindset very well because we are currently in the planning process. Uh, last year, when there was a, a, a big pandemic all over the world, we, we were doing the architecture competition. Uh, we received uh, more, more, uh, more, I would say, concepts or these or design works than we anticipated. So we were in a, in a very good good uh, platform, and it was a great uh, great moment for us to 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 really find the best uh, best architectural concept out of that suits for us and and, and with our mindset. So uh, um, so for us, I would say that uh, it has um, it hasn't made any 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 serious changes to our our uh, our plans. How concerned are you about uh, the remote working situation and do you believe it will continue? I think that the remote working uh, has been a growing trend for uh, quite some time. So uh, especially if the more you go uh, to the Western world and this, this has been a topic for, for quite some time. So it's not a new, but I do think that the COVID has accelerated the process. And I think the companies that didn't think about that seriously before are now really considering and looking for, uh, for an options. And, and uh, this, I think, uh, creates uh, even better opportunity for, for, for new developers to understand the, the new changes, uh, the, the needs, the, cha the changes in the client needs and, and, and adapt to that and then uh, provide the, the, the necessary uh, to supply the, this demand. Okay. 
Thank you, Marty. Uh, so gentlemen, now uh, I'll have uh, several uh, questions uh, for uh, each of you. And uh, um, given the time, please provide very, let's say, short, uh, concise answers. So um, the first question would be, uh, looking back at your existing portfolio or the projects that you already have done, uh, name one thing that you would do differently knowing what you know today. And uh, Petris, maybe maybe we can start with you. You are on mute. Sorry, we we are on a quite good position as we are in the industrial sector. But but one thing, uh, yes, we we had to enter Estonian market sooner because now it's uh, a bit tough with acquiring the land. So that's the one thing. Okay, Martin, what about you? Yeah, well, what a what a crystal ball question. Then, <laughs> I mean, um, hard to answer. I mean, what we would have done differently? It's like uh, would have would have um, uh, let's say listening our mother-in-law advice uh, that we never do. But uh, I guess uh, if we look at the overall um, overall uh, what the pandemic has has hit the most uh, is the hospitality sector and the retail. For sure, um, the, the 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 let's say the decrease uh, in valuations will be uh, will be the the, the you know, highest in in those areas. So probably in that case, really you know theoretically thinking, then uh, the, you should have you know uh, minimized the pro uh, proportion in your portfolio of retail and the hospitality but again hospitality when we have four hotels uh, hotels meant for the local tourism or let's say neighboring countries tourists have been you know you know working you know working out very well last year really i mean the difference be between the year before was only 10 percent i mean very good uh, and with the uh, you know speaking about the retail we shouldn't take it as an absolute terms diy sector has performed better than the year before so again uh, but uh, those those will be affected the most it's 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 uh, it's for, for sure okay thank you marty and what about you i will have the same answer as Peter. so do you look more into acquiring uh, positions more very quicker. good very good uh, next question uh, please name one main risk and one main opportunity you see going forward Patrice, maybe you start again. Uh, so uh, uh, what I mentioned already before that, that came for us uh, like, like a risk and for what big surprise for us that we see that steel construction costs are uh, going up and then we are like, uh, we started like construction company and afterward became uh, architects, engineers and developers. So of course the construction is one of the core businesses of ours. So, so that's one thing I really see what uh, hopefully of course it will change but uh, if, if we want to see more developments going on so so it's very important that those prices are not going up and rental prices are going down so so uh, all the market is going in the not right uh, direction so but but hopefully it, it not uh, it won't impact us so much uh, yeah and opportunity and uh, regarding uh, opportunities uh, of course uh, our company is in, in a very good uh, position it's industrial sector it's like booming at the moment and then we see that a lot of potential possibilities to grow but uh, one thing uh, i would be uh, i i see uh, even here i see a big risks after uh, we uh, going back from uh, recession or from pandemic I think and at that point, uh, here would be some changes and then we'll see how it's going on. So, uh, but usually opportunities, they are coming only when you are doing something. And uh, so we will so seize opportunities in the coming years, because when you are not doing, then uh, opportunities definitely won't come to you. Thank you. Martin, one risk, one opportunity. Yeah, I think I would point out the risk, which uh, basically comes out from the change of the consumer habits uh, when it comes to the retail space and shopping centers so again it's um, it's uh, i wouldn't of course draw a parallel with a kind of you know abandoned shopping centers which you know we have seen the pictures from the united states but rather 
rather that uh, many shopping centers has to make an, let's say, substantial investments into turnaround, remodeling, or changes on the concept. So this is what the, probably the, or the you know, related risk, what, uh, what the owners of the shopping centers uh, didn't you know, foresee, at least in, in, in the nearest future. When it comes to the opportunities, I guess um, we are lucky enough in the Baltics to live in, 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 in a region which has the highest income growth in, in uh, let's say, in Europe. I guess in that, that means that the people continue spending more tomorrow than they do today. That's, I mean, statistically proven. So means uh, if they consume more, then I mean they probably there is a need for new modernized kind of uh, uh, shopping centers, but as well the distribution centers, last mile logistics. I mean uh, in that sense, so probably there might be some good opportunities uh, to acquire some uh, some shopping center which needs to be turned around, uh, but in parallel also invested heavily. So we've seen already Riga plazas. Just a recent transaction in Riga, and you know we may see them more. Thank you, Marty, and uh, you last. Yes, no. From uh, from risk perspective, I think uh, as, as Petr is told, also the construction price is definitely a uh, growing concern, but also the vacancy levels are are definitely something uh, to keep an eye and 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 think about your risk appetite from that perspective. And for for reward perspective. I think that if you are active on a market, then today you can have the opportunity to get the best clients. So. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. So we, we are out of time, so I'll probably sum up uh, our discussion. And uh, I heard quite a few positive things from, from all of you. So uh, it's a pleasure to hear that uh, developments are going forward and that uh, there are uh, segments which, which still will, will drive our economy and, and uh, the growth of the commercial real estate segment. It was uh, great to hear, Martin, from you that that, that uh, you mentioned uh, that equity availability is not an issue and it gives us hope that we will see uh, still activity in investment segment and again in development segment. And of course, uh, as always, develop, new development as we see it always creates uh, uh, interest from tenants and, and hopefully that, that uh, those two trends will align and uh, in a few years we will see uh, Projects will be already adapted to the new situation, will serve the tenant needs, and uh, will, will perform great in the portfolios of, of the Baltic investors. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and, and joining us today. Uh, to all the attendees, thank you once again for staying with us, and I hope you find this, uh, found this discussion interesting. Uh, thank you very much uh, to the panelists uh, for your sh uh, sharing of experience and uh, Angela moderating this uh, discussion. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed uh, the webinar today. And uh, you're welcome to contact us uh, if uh, we haven't uh, answered all your questions. And uh, if you'd like, um, one, just one very last thing I wanted to share with you. If you'd like to acquire our new report with more insights on commercial real estate market trends, please send a request to my email, which you see on the screen, uh, or make a, make a request through our web page. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the, the event. Thank you once again for your attention and have a great day. Let's keep in touch.